Hi guys, welcome to Extra Talk, or actually Transfer Talk. It's a special edition. We're going to talk about news of Stephen Berghuis from Feyenoord, which just happened a few hours ago. So the news came from Mike Ferrey, usually someone who's very, very well informed. No? Okay. Sometimes he's very good informed. Okay. And he said that Ajax has, um, has uh, come to Feyenoord and uh, they're interested in signing Stephen Berghuis. So usually when something happens between Ajax and Feyenoord, uh, there is always a lot of news about it and basically Twitter explodes. So what we're going to do is uh, I want your first reactions, guys. What do you think of the Stephen Berghuis? Who's excited? Please raise your hand. Okay, so I'm the only one. A little bit. All right, a little yeah. bit. All right, so let me start with uh, with Ajax. Uh, Stephen Berghuis. We know that he has a four million uh, buyout clause, so we can get him for four million. He has one year left on his contract. Look, it's Feyenoord. Let's be honest. But it, if we're objectively looking at Feyenoord, he's the best player of Feyenoord. So, what do you think of this possibly getting? Berghuis at Ajax for next season? Objectively, I think he's a good player. Um, I think he proved, uh, although it's an other role at Feyenoord, he proved his worth uh, there. In uh, Since 2016, he's, I think, the most involved player in, uh, in the Eredivisie in goals and assists, even higher than Tadic. But the role is also different at Feyenoord. I cannot see him take on the same role and the same creativity and freedom uh, at Ajax. So I think he will be a good player for the depth in the squad, but I have doubts if he will be a starter. So, um, but it's a bargain buy, you know. Uh, we, there's nothing to say about that. Four million for 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 Berghuis, if you like him or not, if he will be a starter or not, it's it's not that uh, high of a price. Also, you will piss off Feyenoord a lot with it. So this is all <laughs> this is also uh, almost worth the money, you know. But um, I think for, for, for uh, the place we are in with, with Ajax at the moment, uh, 4 million of, for a player like this um, is just cheap. I do not know what his salary uh, demands are, but uh, if we uh, pay uh, 5 million for Kleiber, uh, 4 million for Berghuis is, is really cheap. And I think you could sell him for a lot more in a few years, maybe still, but he's 29 already. But I cannot see him going for less than what, what we buy actually can buy him for. So um would he be my ideal player uh, no because he still is a player from Feyenoord but I have to look at this objectively I think he does have a lot of qualities and I think for the depth in the squad he would be in uh, an addition to the squad I still have doubts if he will be a starter though so this is uh, my take on it and yeah Movimento. I'm still fuming bro go to Sabi first <laughs> Sabi your take first then I feel you, man. I feel you, puppy. Well, Ajax. Okay, I can I, I can uh, cope with what he uh, what he just mentioned, uh, but for me it feels like a like 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 a, like a really a no no go. I mean, financial wise, of course it's a great deal, but I don't care about the finance. I care about my club. I care about uh, the the the. the the club itself, the players, but I don't care about the finance. Even even if we, we would buy him for one million, I would not care. The only good thing about about this possible deal is that we can we could, that we could taunt the fans of uh, of Feyenoord. I mean, they're probably fuming at this moment, just like uh, Papi Mento probably, uh, really frustrated. So that, that's a good thing. But yeah, I mean, honestly, if you are a player, one of the best players at your own club, and you go to the ultimate rival club uh, without the club want to to sell you. So you want to do it on your own. It feels like a backstabbing uh, uh, thing. It's, it's, he's just not not trustworthy. If a player like him comes to Ajax, what could happen? Uh, I mean, it's it feels for me. It doesn't feel right for me. Uh, so no. So no, Sahabi, no. let me let me ask you a question, right? What you're saying is we're not talking about um, how good he is. I mean, as a player. Yeah, he's a he's an okay player. Oh, don't yeah. get me wrong. But yeah. you don't want that kind of player in your team. No, indeed. And he's he's a player who's really irritating. Probably will get a lot of red cards, uh, meaning that he he would jeopardize a lot of uh, play uh, a lot of things during the, the during the during the game. So yeah, he's he doesn't ju he just doesn't fit to Ajax. And uh, in terms of what, in terms of his his character, you mean? 
his his character, but also the fact that it's like quite easy for him to go from uh, from, from a rival club to another uh, the ultimate rival club. I mean, final to Ajax. Uh, and don't forget, uh, I mean, the majority of the fans are against him coming. So what would happen if he would play? Uh, are we going to boo him during the game? Thirty uh, percent of the of the crowd will cheer him; the other would booing him. I think it will create a bit of uh, internal chaos, perhaps. I mean, we should not take that uh, risk by uh, getting only for that four million. It's just that okay. that's totally right. not uh, worth it. Okay, Papimento, are you ah! just leaving my frustrations out, and then I can start. I understand the price. I understand uh, Ajax going for him, but it's the wrong move. And I'll tell you why. If you go for Suleimana with Anthony, you don't need Berahaz. And Berahaz on the bench is going to be a problem maker in that group. He's not going to be happy sitting in, on that bench. And then people telling me on Twitter, yeah, he's so good. He's next to Tadic, the best guy in the Eredivisie. He takes all the penalties. He takes all the free kicks. He takes all the corners. Yeah, no wonder he has stats like that. But he's not going to do all that at Ajax. Okay, if we look at the duels, he he lost more duels at Feyenoord than he won. Okay, first of all, he had 54 corners, 118 crosses. Okay, so low, like, it's logical that you have 14 assists. Okay, if you make nine penalties, logical that you want to get to 18 goals a season. But it's Eredivisie. What else are his stats in the Europa League? Come on, man. Yeah. Trash. <laughs> what Trash. Are, what are his stats yeah. in the Europa League? Do you know? Yeah, 532 minutes played. One goal, I think. Or maybe zero goals. Zero assists for sure. But let's be honest. How, how many times did Feyenoord play in the Europa League? <laughs> he should maybe try it in the Conference League <laughs> first before good. even considering yeah. that. <laughs> no, but okay. uh, yeah. All right, listen, guys. Let me uh, let me ask you a question in general. I mean, just a couple of uh, uh, things here. Um, first of all, if you can buy, I mean, it's not something we do usually in the Netherlands. Let's be honest. This is very unlikely that Ajax or PSV or Feyenoord gets one of the best players from each other. You know, and in this case, we have an opportunity for four million to get an experienced player who has a very good. I mean, okay, I understand he gives a lot of crosses. He makes penalties, but he has a very good um, left foot. You know, I mean, let's be honest about that. And and yeah, you bring in an experienced player who, I mean, in terms of depth in the squad, it brings you extra opportunity, extra alternative. Did you see him last night versus Macedonia, bro? Was he was he like crisp? Was he did he like show his quality of experience, or was he just trash for half an hour? Come on, man. <laughs> Like, he didn't do shit when he came in. I can understand this. Like, and it's not that he's going to be a starter at Ajax. I think Anthony is much better. If you go for Suleimana as well, he's not going to be the good bench player that you want him to be. He's going to be a problem maker. Objectively. Do you guys agree with Papimento? Is is Anthony right now better than Berghuis? Um, like in potential, yes, maybe in stats wise, no, but the roles are different. Uh, Berghuis is like the, the main guy at at Feyenoord, and Anthony is part of the setup at Ajax. So, uh, it's, the defensive it's, work it's, Anthony it's, does, yeah, it's, it's difficult to, yeah. to compare them. But, 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 uh, aside all of this, I understand the sentiment and I understand the, the way, uh, for example, Poppimento reacts, but. If you want to close the gap to like a European top club, and uh, if you look at the bench at Manchester City and, and other teams, I'm not saying he's that kind of standard, but you have to have a lot of players who can play at a certain level. So uh, aside from all the sentiment and him being like a problem maker that we do not know if it will happen like this, if he will start or not, or if, it, or if he like will be a bench player, we do not know all this. It is a... Um, quality injection to your team if you have another another player that can deliver a certain standard. And I, I do think, although I understand the sentiment of, of Papimento, I do think he will add some value to the club, not only uh, like money-wise, but also like quality-wise. And I try to to like look at it without all the sentiment and just try to um, to like look at it objectively. And I do think he has certain qualities that could add something during a long season. 
And um, you do not know if Neers will stay. Uh, Sulemana is not at the club yet. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, for, yeah. for me, I'm not, as, I'm not that negative, but, but I understand the sentiment, though. Yeah, but objectively, uh, as you stated, he is or was a star player at Feyenoord. Mm-hmm. Let's be clear about that. Mm-hmm. Do you really see him uh, as a bench player at Ajax? I really see him. Uh, I, I really think it's going to be a problem within the squad. He was. Yeah, we, do not, we do not. We do not know this. I, I understand. I understand the problem you have with this, and I and I agree with you. No, but don't don't forget. He is also uh, playing for the Dutch national team. Eh? So he mm. always wants to play. I don't think he will stay that silent if he would be benched for uh, for a typical player as uh, Suleimana if he comes in, or for uh, Anthony if he uh, if he would be playing. So but, and Tadic will always play. We have Haller who will yeah. definitely uh, play. So uh, and and and, and Berghaus is, is the star player. Uh, I mean, I, I'm saying this twice, but he's a star player taking all the penalties. Now normally Tadic takes them. The corners. Normally, other players take them. The free kicks, normally, Tadic takes, takes them. It would be but very it, difficult for a player like uh, like uh, Berghaus to include, make his mark. Yeah, exactly. Into yeah. the squad. Without- I, I mean, it's, it's very simple for me. He's just another player. And, and I have faith in Overmars uh, when, he, when he makes a deal. Same with, with, uh, with Berghaus. If he comes at Ajax, he has to prove himself. The best player plays. Simple as that. And then you can have a status at a club like Feyenoord, but Feyenoord is not at the level of Ajax. So what would be the difference? For example, AZ has, has perform, outperformed Feyenoord for many years. What if Stanks or Weindahl come at Ajax? It all, it's, it's also a competitor for us. It maybe does not have the sentiment of the last decades between the rivalry between Ajax and Feyenoord, but still, it's a competitor. Yeah. But the, the, only, we... the only difference, uh, uh, Ajax, is that when you buy uh, Weindahl, you buy Stanks, you know already these are young players that can still develop. Exactly. This is a guy that's 29. He's yeah, not going to be resellable. It's a guy that's going to stay at your club till the end of yeah. his career because and he wants to play. Nobody else wants him. Like, yeah. I, I, I mean, he wants he wants minutes. I mean, at, at his age, you want to play. You're exactly. you also you're also a player of the Dutch national team. You want to keep your place within that squad. You want to play. If that doesn't happen, you automatically, by default, you will create uh, some problems uh, internally. It's up to him. It's up to him. He has to prove himself. If he's not good enough, he is not good enough. Simple exactly. as that. But so, uh, also with other players, Neres didn't play that much also this season. You know, they have to prove themselves. The best player plays. And I think they will make this clear to him. If you come to Ajax... Uh, you cannot have a guaranteed starting place. You have to prove yourself and show you're the best in training, in the minutes you get. And and if he's not good enough, it's, it's his problem. And um, um, yeah, next to this, be- I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm a big fan of of of, of Steven Berghuis, but I do see value in him as a player. And I'm just not as negative as maybe you guys are, but uh, I can live with it if, I, if they do not buy him, but I can see some value in him yeah. for the depth of the squad. That's just, that's about it. And I do not no, care but, if it's Feyenoord, AZ, Pace, no, Pace, best player plays. Exactly. Simple no, as that, that. That I agree with you. I mean, we're talking about theory. In theory, he's a, he's a, he's a good player. Of course, for the depth of the squad, it would be great, etc. But we're, t- we're talking now about a phase after this, like when he's in the squad, how will he cope with the players if he doesn't play? I mean, we have Kleiber. Even Kleiber was 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 telling in the news media that he's that he's not happy with his current role. Of course, we all know that he's not a star player, so we can accept that, and he can, could accept that. But with Berghaus, it's like losing the respect that he had at Feyenoord. It's and like we don't know who Berghaus is. We all know he's a difficult person. We all know that he, he likes to to be annoying sometimes. So how how are you expecting him to be different at Ajax? I, I just don't understand. All right, guys. Don't you don't you don't you think that, that that we had troublemakers in the past within the squad? It's up to the manager and the staff to 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 handle it. So yeah, I, I just I'm just trying to be open in this. And if they do not buy him, I'm fine with it. 
if if they do buy him and he becomes an Ajax player, I will just try to cheer him on and hope for the best. Obviously, obviously. And, and, and uh, also with, with, with the people, maybe they are against it, but if he just scores a few goals and maybe shows his value and just tries to work hard, I would always support player, whoever it is within the team. So, yeah, let's just wait and see. All right, guys, I want to finish off um, by just asking or saying one thing that maybe was not brought up in the argument, but maybe it's also important uh, going forward. Um, I just mentioned it briefly, but our standards as a club has changed in recent years, also domestically. And, you know, this reminds me a little bit. I mean, it's, I know it's a bit different, but it reminds me a little bit what we did in the winter break that we got um, Haller in for 23 and a half million. This is a little bit the same. It's like flex, Ajax is flexing their muscles, you know, and they are showing domestically to PSV, to AZ, to Feyenoord, the rivals, that listen, we are here to, we want to dominate this league. We want to secure Champions League spot. So if we can get one of your best players for a good price, we will do it now. No, no, I, I agree with that. Of course, they want to cope with the Bayern Munich uh, way of work. Uh, I mean, they Bayern Munich is obviously known for buying top players within the Bundesliga, even, uh, from Dortmund, from Leverkusen, or, 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 or which club. Uh, so, and I think Ajax wants to do the same. They want to weaken the opponents so they could take that Champions League spot I mean, uh, year by year. It's a smart move, but I don't know whether from a rival club, a star player from a rival club would help Ajax internally. I mean, for the depth, it's okay. We all know his stats, etc. Okay, but future-wise, also taking into account his age and the, 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 the respect that he has within the club, uh, currently at Feyenoord, etc. It might be a bad move. And I think we should avoid that uh, by taking such a huge risk if you want to buy him. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, last comments, guys. Uh, Money-wise, money wise, I don't... Uh, Money-wise, I do not see it as a big risk. I do not know his salary uh, demands, but four million is just a bargain buy. And um, yeah, how, how he will de- how he will be as a player within the squad, and if he will be a, a havoc maker, troublemaker. Yeah, we just have to wait and see. Uh, for me, it's either way is good. If he does not go to Ajax, I can live with it. If he goes to Ajax, he has to prove himself, and I will cheer him on. But uh, for for the depth in the squad, I can see a value in it. But we just have to wait and see. Pavimento, final comments from you? Yeah, I mean, Bayern buys Lewandowski and Matt Hummels, and we have to do with Berghuis. Nice, man.